Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my most anticipated horror slash thriller books for 2020. Let's get started. Just a quick reminder to everyone that I made a video about the Black Lives Matter movement and being an ally on booktube. I am urging you to go watch that video to insert yourself into this conversation and to do something. I've never made one of these videos before but I've, I've always loved watching them because it's a good way to like get to know what other people are excited about so you can get excited about them too. Ignore my one nailless finger. We're not going to talk about it. Let's get started. So I want to talk about the obvious one, shall we? Let's talk about Mallory by Josh Mallerman. So Mallory is the sequel to Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. Now in case you've been living under a rock, in case you don't know, Bird Box was some huge ass shit like last year or the year before that. Everyone loved it. I'm not surprised that there is a sequel coming out. However, I'm not exactly like super hyped on it. I don't, I'm not expecting it to be like groundbreaking just because the book didn't like blow up my preconceived notions of what a horror novel should be. I thought it was okay. I thought it was good. I didn't think it was great. So the sequel I have hopes for, but I'm not like sitting here being like, it's gonna be the best thing I've ever experienced. And as for the plot, I literally have no idea what it's gonna be about. I mean, obviously it's gonna have Mallory in it, but who knows what's gonna happen after that. Either way, I am looking forward to it. It's on this list. We've got it out of the way. Let's continue. One book that I heard about recently that I haven't heard like literally anyone talk about is Fly Away by Kathleen Jennings. I've literally heard no one talk about this, but I read the description and it seems like it's going to be really, really good. And the artwork looks gorgeous like gorgeous based on the artwork and based on the fact that it's like a family gothic horror <laughs> take my money dude take my money that sounds so fucking good personally don't know like exactly what this is about i do know though that i love a good gothic horror novel i love me a creepy mansion and i love stories about families and the and the little tiny divots in relationships where little seeds of hatred grow and then it all just blows up in everyone's face. I love that. After I'm done filming this, I'm gonna pre-order it. I'm so excited. Let's talk about a little bit of YA, shall we? Let's talk about Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar. Cesar? Cesar? I, I'm not sure exactly what the pronunciation is. Excuse my ignorance though. By the way, before we get too far, Adam Cesar, Adam Cesar is a booktuber. He talks about horror. You should go follow him. I will put a link in his description. or <laughs> I will put a link in the description for you in case you want to check him out because I've watched a few of his videos and he's like really, really good. And he talks about some really underrated horror. Would recommend. Anyway, it's about a bunch of teenage kids who I'm assuming come face to face with the clown in a cornfield. But the clown just might want to, I don't know, murder them? <laughs> just might want to eat them? I don't know. All I know is I'm a sucker like a sucker for creepy ass clowns. <sighs> I'm a sucker for creepy clowns. I'm a sucker for murderous clowns. This, like I'm so excited for this book. I think it's gonna be so, so good. I haven't read a lot of YA horror um, and personally, honestly, I have, it's almost like I have kind of like a, like a bias against it because a lot of people will be like, oh my God, this is YA horror. This is crazy. And they'll be talking about like Wilder Girls or something, which to me, like didn't feel like horror. And that's just me. That's just me. I just didn't feel like that was horror. For me, YA horror can kind of, can kind of be like combined with a whole bunch of other shit. 
like fantasy or romance and I'm just not into that. I want my horror most of the time just straight up. Sometimes I like it a little bit mixed in but we'll get to that. Anyway, my point is I don't see a lot of just straight horror in the wife in the YA genre and so I'm really really looking forward to this. I'm so excited. You may not have seen it but the month of May I read a book called the Twisted Ones by T. Kingfisher. I wasn't exactly like a fan. I wasn't exactly like crazy about it. I loved the first half of it, but the second half of it was so trash and so stupid that the longer I dwell in it, the longer I think about it, the more I'm like angry about it. My point is I'm adding T. Kingfisher's next book to this video, and that is The Hollow Places. I love the first half of the Twisted One so much that I'm willing to give T. Kingfisher another chance, to give her another shot. I'm hoping that with this book, she will come through with it. She will blow us away <laughs> because she clearly did not do that in The Twisted Ones. That's what it's called. The Hollow Places <laughs> by T. Kingfisher is a similar kind of to The Twisted Ones. It deals a lot with like also like with alternate dimensions. It deals with alternate realities. It also deals with obsession and with like a character having to go through like some kind of labyrinth. I don't know that much about it, but it seems like it's going to be one of those books that's like crazy and weird, which I'm into if it's good. I have, I have some misplaced hope for this book. And I don't know if it's going to come through, but I'm really, really hoping that she does come through because she has the potential to be like, like one of, like one of my favorites. She has the potential to get there. She just, she just missed the mark. So I'm really, really hoping that her next book, um, is awesome and fixes the problems that the Twisted Ones had. Hi, editing Jordan here. I totally forgot to mention one of my most anticipated books, which is The Only Good Indians. I'm so excited for this book and it's ridiculous that I forgot to mention it. It follows a group of four Native American men, I think, who are all trying to survive against some kind of entity who's trying to take revenge on them. The synopsis on Goodreads is super vague, but it seems so, so good. The cover is beautiful. It's literally like my most anticipated book and it's ridiculous that I forgot to mention it, but here we are. You don't see a lot of books featuring characters of color, especially indigenous characters, especially in horror. It's super rare, so I'm so excited and yeah, I had to mention it. So anyway, back to the video. I have talked so much on my channel about baby teeth. It's like one of my favorite books. It's so fucked up and crazy and creepy and like actually terrifying. It's like, it's so good. It's, I talk about it so much. When I heard that Zoidge Stage was coming out with another book, with a new book. <laughs> I was so happy. I was so happy. It's marketed as The Shining if it was written by Shirley Jackson. I don't know if you guys have met Bug yet. I think you guys have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys have met Bug. This is Bug. <laughs> He's just a little monster. <laughs> he likes to bite, but we don't mind. Ow! <laughs> Shining written by Shirley Jackson. Like, bitch. Like, take my money. Just take it. I am so excited. I'm trying not to read too much of the synopsis for it because I do think it would be fun to go into it blind. Ow! 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 <laughs> so I'm trying not to give too much of it away for myself. Baby Teeth is so fucking good. You need to read Baby Teeth and then you need to add Wonderland to your TBR. Next up, we have Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay. Paul Tremblay has slowly become one of my favorite horror writers. His newest book seems really, really good. So it's called Survivor Song, 
and it's about this virus that takes hold of the world and like a whole bunch of people are getting infected with it and dying. This doctor receives a phone call from this woman who I'm assuming is a patient named Natalie and Natalie is like dude my shit's all fucked up um my husband got the virus from someone and that person like murdered my husband but now I've also been bitten and so I have the virus but like I'm fucking pregnant dude like what the fuck am I gonna do and so the doctor and Natalie have to travel to a hospital to like get the best help that they can so that her baby can survive we love a story about an epidemic we love a story that's like post-apocalyptic slash like you know current apocalyptic what do they call that what do they call books that are set during the apocalypse are they just called apocalypse books i'm so excited for this it's coming out i think in july now let's talk about the book with the most beautiful fucking cover you've ever seen and that is mexican gothic by Silvia Moreno uh, Garcia. I'm really excited for this and I believe that it's kind of it's sort of mixing in like elements of gothic fiction with um, like soap operas maybe. I don't know. It's about a girl who gets a phone call from her friend saying like dude my husband is a piece of shit like, creepy and crazy. So her friend goes to their house um, and is staying with them and gets to know her like her friend's husband and I think it goes from there I don't know all I know is I saw the cover I saw that it was in like in the horror category and I was like yes I will please have that thank you so much let's talk about something that's not necessarily like horror but like more like mystery slash thriller at least I think <laughs> So there is The Devil and the Dark Water by Stuart Turton. I own his other book, The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hugo. I haven't read it. I've heard a lot of really good things and I've heard some kind of bad things about it as well. So I need to get to that. But I read the synopsis for this book and I was like, that's weird, but I'm into it. So basically this is following a bunch of people on a ship and I think the ship is haunted by a demon. Yeah, a demon. I think it's historical fiction mixed with a possession story, which <laughs> I didn't know I needed, but now that I do, like, <laughs> it's over, it's over. I don't know what to think because on one hand, on one hand, I love it when authors can mix like complete different genres together and mix them, right? But I'm worried that this is going to come off similar to like Air Rat, where the author really wanted to tell the story in one specific genre, but sort of underdeveloped in other ways. So I'm really concerned about that, but I'm willing to give it a shot, um, especially since everybody loves like loves the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. So the last book we're going to talk about in this video is called A Peculiar Peril by Jeff Vandermeer. Um, and similar to um, The Devil and the Dark Water, this is this kind of, I think, blends horror with other genres. S Jeff Vandermeer does a lot of sci-fi. I've read two of his books. Um, the first two books in the Annihilation trilogy. I need to finish it. I literally haven't, but I need to anyway. I read those two books and I really, really enjoyed them. He's really good at mending and like morphing science fiction and horror together into one. And it doesn't feel like either is sort of lacking. They feel really like complementary to each other. And I literally don't know what this book is about. Like all I know is it has a gorgeous cover. The cover is beautiful. And I know that I like Jeff Vandermeer's attempts at horror. I like what he does with the genre, what he does with um, sci-fi horror. I really, really like it. So I guess I don't really need to know what it's about. Let me know down below if you have read any of Jeff Vandermeer's other work, like Dead Astronauts or something, I would love to know. 
Um, I would like to know like what his other work is like because I've only ever read from one trilogy. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a comment down below letting me know what your most anticipated horror novels of 2020 are. I would love to know because I'm always, always, always looking for new books to add to my giant endless lists. So if you have any, please put them down below. And don't forget to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit, we talk about creepy shit, we talk about anticipated shit here. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next one. Bye!